Hello there, ladies and gentlemen. Now, first of all, I would like to uh, start this video by making a uh, make a statement here. Now, my opinions are subjective. Everybody's opinion is subjective. Uh, opinions can change with information. So I'd like you all to take uh, what I say here with a grain of salt and uh, don't take anything as absolute truth unless it can be verified. So, right, uh, now what I've been thinking about tonight is, uh, well, I'm going to say that I had a little bit of wine, so uh, when I have a little bit of wine, I tend to get quite reflective. So, I've, um, it's been interesting to me. I've been uh, recently reading up and listening to a few lectures upon China, and, uh, well, the uh, lectures have been the rise, uh, sorry, the fall and uh, rise of China. I can't remember who by, but it's one of the great courses lectures. And um, it's hard not to see the similarities between the uh, current unrest, the current protests against the uh, Trump election, has been similar to that of uh, the Red Guard in China between 1966 and 67. Now, what were the Red Guard? The Red Guard were more or less, uh, let's try and find an image here, so this is uh, just pictures of the Cultural Revolution, uh, but what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the Red Guards themselves. Now, the Red Guards were basically ideologically driven um, young people, primarily young people, now, these uh, revolutionaries, uh, the Red Guard, as they so called themselves, were nicknamed uh, Mao's Little Red Generals, Mao's soldiers, basically. Now, these young people here were very ideologically driven. They were not dumb. I mean, these were majority students and etc. And um, it's hard to not see the similarities between the Red Guard and uh, the current unrest in America. Now, I'm not saying that these people um, protesting the Trump election are communists. That would be silly of me to say. I'm not going to um, imagine that I'm omniscient and can tell you what some of these ideological, like, ideological leanings are. But it's hard to not see the similarities here. Now, the Red Guards were in effect banished in the end. But basically, these youngsters, and you do have to point that out, these are youngsters. More, more... Um, on the whole, they were mostly youngsters. Now, they had what was uh, basically known as uh, the Little Red Buck. Now, this was basically uh, Mao's ideology. Well, ideology. Um, con... Well... Pushed and condensed down into Little Red Buck. Now, it's hard to not see the similarities between uh, the current unrest and uh, the Red Guard. Now let's see. Let's uh, now just to show you that I'm not being like uh, muddy in the waters here. As you can see here, anti Trump protests. I've just this is what I've just searched on YouTube. Now I'm not going to watch this because it's eleven hours, almost twelve hours. Like goddamn. Uh, so I prefer to not go for the low hanging fruit of oh look at this violence. Oh dear, look at this violence. I prefer to look at things like this. So we're going to take a look at this one, for instance. Right. Okay. So, uh, fuck racist scum. Now that's very interesting. Let's see. I hope that Donald Trump will get assassinated. So, I swear to god I've not watched this video before. But you can see there is a militant... ...element within this. There's definitely something militant within this. Okay. He couldn't even use like a sounds or whatever. Okay. So, we have an LGBT flag over here. I have absolutely no problem with the LGBT community, other than the fact that they seek to- Well, I say they, that wouldn't make them all into one group. I say, as in there are people who are seeking to establish, um, their pronoun, their pronoun bloody hegemony over the rest of us. And I don't think that's correct. I don't think anybody has hegemony over the English language. And the language is as it is. Let's not become thought criminals. But anyway, moving on. Okay. Now look at these people, mostly young. We cannot accept Donald Trump. Now, why is that? Is that because they believe that the uh, democratic system in America is uh, failing them? Is it wrong? Is it rigged? Who knows? We'll see. Okay, let's just do, not to, uh, not to, like, uh, invoke the Asian here, but let's take a look at the, um, pictures over here then. Uh, so, this is what I'm talking about. It's hard to see uh, the, uh, differences here. Sorry, the, well, you know what I mean. <laughs> this is the wine. I should not have done this when I had some wine. But, they're both ideologically driven. 
they're both uh, driven by these ideologies. And it's hard to say what the um, ideology he is, is over here. Is it, um, is it something like um, the communist ideology? I don't think so. Is it something like uh, the socialist ideology? I think that has a few more leanings, but honestly, I think it's more to do with Marxism. Marxism is in the fact that everything is equal in a sense, but though there are those who are more equal than others, and uh, that the bourgeois, bourgeois must be brought down, and that uh, power must be taken from the powerful and shared among the masses. Now, there is a German, let's, uh, let's bring it up here, the long march through the institutions. I think the reaction we're seeing here in America from these people protesting is the reaction to the fact that um, the element within American society that is trying to gain control here, at least trying to pro uh, propagate uh, their ideology, is well has suffered a massive defeat here. They're not out by any means. But I mean, let's take a look here. So we have uh, Rudy, uh, I don't know how you say his name here, but the phrase the Long March is reference to the prolonged struggle of the Chinese communists. Uh, so basically the Long March of the institutions is the idea that um, for this ideology to um, become successful, they must take over the uh, institutions, such as education, government, and etc. And I think that has really been seen within America's institutions, uh, at least educational institutions, like the the many universities with safe, uh, safe space culture, just all this nonsense. Like, let's take a look at this. And um, when it loads up, apparently my internet seems to be quite uh, shitty at the moment. Um, safe space. Okay. Right, here we go. So this is a fairly old video. Sorry, I can't just yell. <laughs> I came this, to this country five years ago, when I was 15, alone, to a boarding school in Pennsylvania. And what I heard out is, if you don't speak English, go home. If you don't speak good English good enough, go home. I don't date Asians, and, I, and I'd like to have sex with a girl from all the continent. That's why I want to date you. So let's take a look at the uh, demographics here. We have a bunch of mixed demographics. We have white people, we have black people, we have Asians, etc, etc. Uh, not to point that out, but that is uh, quite a significant thing here to note. Now we do have a young woman here. She, now she's just stated that she's just recently moved to the area. Oh, well, not too much recently. But she's talking about it's, it's difficult for people to come here. And I think she is somewhat representing the um, idea of the American dream. Basically, you can come to, uh, you can go to America. It doesn't matter where you're from, who you are, but you can build yourself up. And um, I think that's quite an important note to uh, make here. But these people here, so many slogans, so many slogans. Too much talk, not enough action. That seems very militant. What action do they suppose? Do they suppose that uh, people shouldn't be murdered for their views? Obviously that's extreme, but you know what I mean. And I, while I was walking down the street from my, from my high school to Walgreens, I like was this here, it's too late to say my, sorry. Uh, friends from both China and I will Taiwan. not be silent. And Who is silencing these people? They live in a society with free speech. Who is silencing them? The only people here that I've noticed um, silencing any of us is the fact of these people here. Now these people here who claim to be the victims seem to be the ones in, uh, in the power here. I Suddenly, believe we have uh, what might be the we dean or at least some the, teacher the, like, here. The light, the green light was on, and uh, when we were crossing the crosswalk, there is a car just rush, like rushed through us, driven by an African American, shouting that go, go back to your home, like go back from where you are from, something like that. I don't remember exactly. Now, a common statement from. Um, the aggressives. I'm going to go with the aggressives. It's quite a, it's quite a nice little uh, label. I know it's a terrible thing to label people, but hey. Uh, now, usually the common uh, rhetoric is that black people can't be uh, racist. Uh, this plays into the idea of the uh, God. What is it now? Ah, oh, my. Ah, oh, it is the ideology of basically um, the stack. The um, ah, something stack. But basically, the uh, pyramid of um, repression, of suppression, it's something like that. God damn it, I should have made a note of this. But basically, you have um, the people that have been um, suppressed the most. Like, so you have, like, um, people of colour, uh, gay people, etc, etc. But basically, it's the, um, ah, God, I can't remember it, but I've, uh, 
I'll come back to that one maybe in the future. I might make a note underneath the video. Exactly. And then a, a car, a, a white lady, just parked right by us and said, Are you okay? Are you hurt of any way? We're not hurt. It's just shocked and scared of our safety. And this white lady uh, kindly asked, Can I, uh, can I call the police? Can I do anything for you? We were like, It's okay. Thank you very much for your care. The point I'm making here is that we should not distinguish people by their race or or gender or anything. Black people can be racist. White people, sorry. Now see the dissent here. Now see this instant dissent. She's saying that everybody's basically equal. There is no difference between um, a black person and a white person. They're all equal here in uh, democratic rights, in just in, in human rights. Now see how they're trying to control the um, speech here. So, of course, I've gone off a little topic here. Well, I've gone off topic somewhat. Uh, but basically, what I'd like to say is the... Uh, okay, that's rather amusing, actually. <laughs> right, anyway. 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 Now, um, I do think there is a similarity here. I think there is a similarity that can't be ignored, and I think it's one of those things that um, needs to be taken a look at. Uh, especially as we enter the fifth, is it the fifth, um, day of, uh, yeah, anti-Trump protests. So these people here, are they protesting democracy or are they protesting Trump? I understand the right to protest, I honestly understand that, but for all of this violence, all, just so much. Now this is literally straw man. This is what they do to um, people proposing ideologies. They basically construct them to straw man. Okay, now that was fun to watch somebody um, hit a Trump pinata. Can't say I uh, dislike that, but hey, let's go on. Right, so this was... Uh, I want to show people what's happening right now in the streets day. of Portland. This is breaking news happening right now. This appears to be, I don't know if it's tear gas, it could be smoke. Uh, but some kind of device now being used by police to di disperse the crowds we think there on Portland. These demonstrations have been going on across the country overnight in Portland specifically. Again, police are saying they're more than demonstrations. They are riots because of the damage to, to property and also the danger posed to law enforcement. Things have been thrown at them. I suppose let's keep these pictures up while we bring yeah. up the subject of, of Donald Trump's response to the protests overnight. And Eugene Scott, let me just read you the tweet again from Donald Trump. He said, just had a very open and successful presidential election. Now professional protesters incited by media are protesting very unfair. Look, I mean, I wouldn't expect Donald Trump to be happy with these right. protests, right. Um, but I think that on either side, had Hillary Clinton won, we would have seen right. demonstrations and they would have been understandable. You're seeing these demonstrations that are understandable. I don't think there's any evidence they're caused by professional protesters given the fact that they sprouted up across the country, and I don't see there's any evidence that they're incited. Okay, now that's that's very interesting to say, uh, by the fact that they sprouted up across the country. Now, <laughs> I'm pretty damn sure if there are professional protesters, which I believe there are evidence of which um, confirms that. I'm pretty damn sure they could organise. That's the thing, they could definitely organise. There's a hell of a lot of anti-Trump... Um, bloody uh sympathy out there there's a hell of a lot of people ready to be angry and um this is why i can't help but draw the similarities now another reason for the similarity is um how is how ah, bloody hell this is what happens when you have wine you can't remember how the fuck to pronounce things but anyway uh now this was a uh play written by wuhan now wuhan wrote a play about a um municipal politician being dismissed by the emperor basically 
And uh, I think it kind of plays into uh, some significance here, as the Red Guard really did come about from this, um, this, this, uh, what do you call it now? This um, debacle. Yeah, right, okay. The first students call themselves Red Guards in China, groups of students who were given the name Red Guards to sign two black character posters. Da, 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 da. The students believe that the criticism of the play was a political issue that needed greater attention. Alright, okay. Intellectual elitism and uh, bourgeois tendencies. Right, so. Basically, yeah. there's historical similarities here. I'm not saying this is um, equivalent to uh, Clinton just losing the presidency. But there is historical precedence that I think we need to take a look at. And I don't think anybody else has actually made any sort of comparison between the um, unrest in America and uh, the Chinese Red Guard of the uh, 60s. I just... At least that's my my uh, thoughts on this situation. Now, this is not very, very coordinated. It's not very... Uh, it's not fantastic. So I apologize for this. I should have really have waited and thought this out a little bit more. But I thought, uh, with the response to the last video, that I thought I should try and put something out there again. Um, now, my channel is primarily a gaming channel. There's only one political video in here. And, of course, if people are interested in this, then I could try. I don't mind it, but obviously I might uh, create a separate channel in the future. As I'd hate to polarize people, uh, but it's not my objective here. And, of course, as I finish the last video, I'd like to say, think for yourself, look up this information and decide for yourself. Just try and um, figure out what your, what your thoughts are, what your opinion is, rather than being told what your opinion is. Now, of course, I'm going to leave it here. But I'd like you guys just to just have a little think about this. Just tell me what you think about this sort of thing. Does it have any similarities? Am I really far off here? Obviously, not being in the American uh, political system or being an American citizen, it's pretty hard to really have any information um, other than that that you can garner from the outside world. Now, um, I could be wrong. I could be very wrong. And if I am, if there is evidence to say that I'm wrong and that's completely... Um, my... my um, view here is just completely out of the ordinary, you're just completely wrong, then just tell me down below. I'd love to hear about it. And uh, I'm not afraid to have my opinion challenged or, well, be shown the errors of my ways. So until next time, guys, thank you and uh, keep safe.